Well, hello again from Kingston, where fall has definitely arrived and where there have been several major developments this week. Don't forget, at the end, to stay for the wildlife. It's been a busy week there too. This week, the fall colours have become really apparent. And the whole project has benefited from some really fine weather. But before we go into any detail, I thought you might like to see how things were this time last year. Just the preparations to construct the amazing structure we have today. Let's start this week with the steel structure. One of the first things lifted on, on Tuesday, was a portable toilet. A sure sign of much activity ahead. Throughout the week, a very capable crew was engaged in moving and installing objects all across the structure. Objects both large and small. The placement of brackets to accommodate the sidewalk that provides temporary protection for the force is a priority. These are not small objects and they require careful handling and installation. The boards laid along them are not small either. But the crowning glory of this week's work atop the steel was the installation of the first platforms or catwalks that will support the observation deck on the fingers. Completed on a dull Friday, it was a sure sign of brighter, better things to come. Turning to the east end, this too has been a very busy scene. Tuesday saw the return of Williams Paving to lay new layers of asphalt on Highway 15. It's hot, demanding work that requires attention to detail. Did I mention? It's pretty noisy too. And it's all subject to rigorous independent testing. Here, a density level is measured. Samples are also taken away in cardboard boxes for laboratory checks. Occasionally, it's necessary to water the finished asphalt to bring the temperature down. But the noisiest machine this week was undoubtedly the hydro excavator employed by Hewson to support work by Black and McDonald, as they installed new light bases and conduits. Tomlinson's capable infrastructure team was very busy on Highway 15 this week too, as they first excavated the trench for and then laid drainage pipe. Filling in as they proceed north up the east side of Highway 15. Time can always be found to give members of the crew experience and unfamiliar machinery. Building skills that can only benefit them. Highway 15 wasn't the only place to benefit from the installation of drainage this week. On Monday, a major drain was placed on Lower Gore. And all week, trucks from Mulrooney continued to carry away spoil and to deliver rubble and gravel to build up Lower Gore Road 
leading to the abutment. But there are two ends to the bridge, and on the west end, deliveries of new concrete slabs from Decast occurred twice this week. Regular followers of these updates won't be surprised to hear that substantial concrete deliveries were also taking place this week to fill in two of the gaps between concrete girders or diaphragms. Timely arrival of the concrete from CBM is absolutely critical, but no truck leaves the site without a good cleanup and rinse out. And by now, you all know that it's the work of the team installing reinforcing rod that keep the whole process going. Well, that's a lot to take in, and I think it's probably time to enjoy some of the wildlife. That brings another week to a close and I'm glad you've been with me for these updates. Please encourage others to subscribe and uh, let me know what you think of them in the comments below. Bye for now.